St. Baldrick's Night here in Raleigh. Smiles all the way around. Great cause. We'll be into that all night long. 124th all-time meeting between these two teams. Tonight's starting goaltenders brought to you by Golden Corral. Help yourself to happiness. And for Cam Moore, 34 saves. Stellar win over Winnipeg Saturday night. And young Anders Nilsson goes for the New York Islanders. They're getting a look at him. Evgeny Nabokov had a shutout in their last game. It was 2-0 over Columbus on Sunday. Young man gets the start here. Kelly Sutherland and Grant Skilleter are the referees. Scott Driscoll, Brian Galloway on the lines. Sit back and enjoy this one from PNC Arena. Off the draw. Jordan Stahl, pressure on Franz Nielsen. Travis Hamannick away now for Kyle Oposo. Held in the Islanders zone by Carolina's Alexander Semin. He'll dance to the outside of Nielsen. Saucer pass intended for Nathan Gerby. Jordan gets control from the corner, muscled by Anders Lee. Now Oposo tries to clear. Held in by Carolina's Nathan Gerby. Alex Semin with a shot wide of Nielsen. Now it's played here by Jordan Stahl. Up top it goes. John Michael Lyles for Ron Hainsey, denied by Oposo, and it comes back out to center right. Even with the nice uh, road trip, uh, you know, and wins uh, over Columbus and Winnipeg, with a pretty decent effort in the final two periods in Chicago, the Hurricanes did not start as well as they'd like. They can try to improve that at home tonight. Haynes with victories over Columbus and Winnipeg on the trip, as that one is easily denied by Cam Ward. A loss and a tough loss, a one-goal loss in Chicago on Friday night. Yuri Talusti on this line with Eric Stahl and Andre Loktyanov, who overskates. Lyles lays it ahead, and young Kevin Churchman out of Lake Superior State in his third NHL game back to get it. He's a good skater. He was a part of actually the, the first goal of the game and the game winner against the Columbus Blue Jackets up on Long Island Sunday. Eric Stahl poked away by young Churchman, and now the Islanders start again. The Islanders have been very good on the road this season for a young team. 12-4-1. In their last 17 away from home, Clutterbuck sails it across. Matt Donovan with a shot picked off by Cam Ward as we take a look at Kirk Muller for the first time tonight. Well, I know Kirk Muller, as we all were, was amazed by the performance of Cam Ward uh, against the Jets, especially in the first period, where the Jets uh, had an edge you would expect as they were waiting for Carolina. Jack Capuano. Uh, Gar Snow told me this morning, hey, listen, he's still the smart coach that guided his team to the playoffs last year. He didn't become dumb during the summertime. Both Snow and Capuano, former members of the main Black Bear team collegiately. Rex Express Care injuries and scratches now at the top of your screen. Rex Healthcare chosen for excellence. Jay Harrison for Brett Belmore. And a reverse finding Carolina's 44. Now Harrison for Skinner as they start again. Made along and wedged all the way back. The Hurricanes will hit the road. We will be in South Florida on Thursday night before coming back home and taking on Columbus on Saturday. Elias Lindholm is muscled by Matt Donovan. Matt Gartner gets a stick to it. And away go the Islanders out to center ice. Colin McDonald will forge it all the way back in the Carolina zone. I do give a lot of credit to Garth Snow for saying that because, you know, he believes in his coach. They communicate on a daily basis. And... It, it, and I know Snow also believes in the youth of this hockey club. We're going to see a lot of those uh, young pieces tonight. All right, Tripp, let's take a look at tonight's Storm Tracker. Well, I know Kirk Muller is looking on home ice for his team to take charge in the first period. They've already had a couple of pretty decent uh, court checking shifts, although no shots on net. Sakara, big bounce back game against the Jets. Fault to the new contract. How do they play as a top bearing back together? And the face-offs being able to put your stick down second, and that's an edge, and it leads to Malhotra winning one there. Belmore, who just played over five minutes in Winnipeg on Saturday night at his ice time curtailed, clears it out of play. We get a stoppage here, just about three minutes gone in period one. I think Anton, who'd opened the backup goaltender, might have made the save there on that. Uh, it's good. On that, uh, John McLean is and actually. It's a sharp trip. Well, you do. You and know that. Uh, I know that uh, Anton, who'd opened, has told his teammates the release you want to watch on this team is his former Wild teammate, Clutterbuck. Shot taken by Calvin DeHaan goes wide. Lots of new names. Nine rookies in the Islander lineup here tonight. Sailed across. And that can have good moments and bad. The good one was Sunday afternoon. 2-0 win over Columbus. The game previous, 6-0 loss to Minnesota. Both at home. Now Lyles fights off Anders Lee. It's loose to the corner. Ron Hainsey coming all the way across. Kyle Oposo is on him. Oposo has 69 scoring points in 70 games. Easy chance for Cam Ward off the stick of Franz Nielsen. Oposo for Lee. 
He's checked right off it by Jordan Stahl, and away they go. Yeah, pretty good start for the Islanders. Uh, the first four shots on net. Now comes all the way back Kevin Churchman. They sign as a free agent on a college hockey. He'll lug it ahead. Churchman out to center ice. Clutterbuck at his side. He wheels one in on Cam Ward, and he'll freeze. If the Canes win tonight, all Caniacs win. Get 50% off your entire menu price online order at participating Papa John's the day after a Canes win. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. So even though Andre Laktionov is playing center on this line, Eric Stahl is taking the faceoffs because Eric Stahl is a better faceoff man, and this is the side that is his power side. Brian Strom, first round draft choice on the faceoff here against Eric Stahl. Nice look from ice level. Strom wins it back for Thomas Hickey. Hickey with a wrister. Tipped right on. Ward says no. And they score on the rebound. Colin McDonald stays with it. And the Islanders strike first. That's just a faceoff you don't want to lose. Ryan Strom, is, uh, he told me this morning, he, he was 180 pounds when he played for Niagara in the Ontario Hockey League in junior. And now he's just 185. And, you know, they're both uh, trying to win it on their backhand. Strom just wins it. And a good job there. Look at the, the, the net front, the layers of presence. I don't know, John, if that is redirected by Martin or McDonald's second effort. I think it's, it's obviously McDonald's goal. You look at it, but you win a faceoff. A defenseman gets the puck to the net, waiting for the traffic to evolve. And then you have determination in front of the net. I mean, that just showed right there who, from the drop of the puck, was ready to start on time. The Islanders have the first six shots in the opening goal. Matt Martin looking for Casey Sasikis. And now it's carried here by Thomas Hickey. Through the blue and all the way across, Elias Lindholm for Carolina. He gave it away to Kevin Churchman, who settles it down and feeds it right back in the Carolina zone. Ryan Strom told me that uh, he's just starting to get confident in his two-way game. You know, I know Gus Snow is going to be very patient with him because his skill got him drafted in the top five picks in the entry draft, but he still hasn't even begun to fill out. All right, Colin McDonald trip gets the goal. We'll see it again from the faceoff. Well, stop it right here, guys. There's the key battle. Right, we'll roll forward. And McDonald was actually on the boards playing the wing. And this was just a series of one-on-one -on -one battles. Strom beat Eric Stahl, and then eventually McDonald won his battle to get to the net, and then the hunger to get to the pocket, and Cam Ward was unable to cover it. Colin McDonald, his seventh goal of the season from Thomas Hickey and Ryan Strom. They make it 1-0 at 339. Franz Nielsen high with the top of Cam Ward, who has a hard time locating the puck after the carom and now Falk is pickpocketed by Oposo. Anders Lee, Oposo shot denied by Andre Sakara. It's all New York early. Donovan with a shot wide of Cam Ward. Karkner at the point. Turning stick of Franz Nielsen broken up by Trayson Bowman and away they go. Patrick Dwyer now will settle it down low. This is disappointing the first five minutes. I mean still so much game left but you know, it's different when, uh, you know, you start at home and on most nights than on the road. You want to get the crowd electrified and energized early. Cal Clutterbuck is one of those igniters for the Islanders out to center ice. Ron Hainsey will look it over. He'll thread it all the way back past Anders Nilsson, and we get a stoppage of play. Kaniacs, it's time for the most Southwest Grill. Hey, hey, what do you say, Queso player? It's Justin Falk. He scores tonight. All Kaniacs receive a free side of most famous queso and hot fresh chips tomorrow at any triangle locale. I know he thinks the offensive dimension to his game is coming. He looks at Sequeiros in the top ten in scoring. He doesn't want to force it, but he expects it. Another tip chance. Another goal. Travis Hamanek with the shot. Brock Nelson was out in front along with Cal Clutterbuck. And they were flooding the front of Cam Ward's crease, and the Islanders make it 2-0. Well, it's the same guy right side of your screen, Clutterbuck, so in the same position as McDonald, who I believe scores the goal. So the same guy, the only difference is, is Eric Stahl lost the first draw, and Jordan loses the second. You see the high tip that allows the puck to get to the front of the net, and Clutterbuck scores it. So it's the exact same guy. McDonald, the winger on the boards. Clutterbuck gets his second in as many games, the winger on the boards on this second one. And John, the reality is, take charge early in the first period. 
is our first game key, and the Hurricanes just were not ready to start this game at puck drop at 7.08. Travis Hamanick also scored Sunday against Columbus. There's one tip, Josh Bailey, then it kicks off Nelson off the pad, and then Clutterbuck. Well, I mean, hockey is a series of one-on-one -on -one battles. It starts with the faceoff. That's two offensive zone draws. By the way, faceoffs are our third game key tonight. And you can just see it right there. I, I mean, and for Cam Ward to be able to bring his uh, spectacular game home, he has a part in it. I mean, this is a collective team slow start against an Islander hockey club that beat Columbus for just the second time uh, in regulation in their history of playing against one another. And that was a desperate Columbus hockey club. So they're confident right now, and they're playing like it. So it is Cal Clutterbuck, as we saw, 11th goal of the season, strip pointed out, second in as many games. Brock Nelson, a rookie. Josh Bailey, former first round pick. They get the helpers. Strong for McDonald. And Kurt Muller forced to burn his time out very early. Calvin DeHaan denied by Yuri Tulusti. McDonald has Matt Martin out in front. It's loose this way. Lakhtianov slow to get there. Along the boards, Ryan Strome back to the point. Hemenek, he'll settle it down. Calvin DeHaan faking, looking for a lane. He'll go to work. Calvin DeHaan now circling, wheeling one in front. There's a goal again. Colin McDonald delayed. Makes it 3-0 Islanders with 13.48 left in period one. I think Kirk Mauer is going to go to Anton Hudobin. The timeout didn't work, so now he goes with the next attempt at trying to shoot some life into his hockey club, and that's to make a goaltending switch. Boy. Obviously, from a New York standpoint, uh, it's a thrilling start uh, coming off of an excellent shutout win. Different goaltender in the Nets. It was Nabokov Sunday, but this is just... You know, now this one, it, the New York Islander defense have been involved in all three goals. You know, here it's a, oh boy, that's a tough adjustment there, an interchange between Eric Stahl and Justin Falk. And that's what created the opening on the back door. I'm not sure why Stahl left McDonald, because he looked to be the guy on McDonald on the back door. Falk was on his man. And Eric, I think, just needed to stay put there on the back door, and you wouldn't have had a guy so wide open that he actually could be patient and wait for Cam Ward to, to play his move and then deposit it in the far side. Kyle Oposo, they win the center ice draw. They get it deep to the point. Kevin Churchman inside for Anders Lee. Stood up by Belmore. Played here and overskated by Oposo. Now Lee, the young man out of Notre Dame. Franz Nielsen. Oposo defended by Jay Harrison. It almost turns into another scoring chance for the Islanders. Jordan Stahl. Leaves it for Alex Seven, who's defended by Thomas Hickey. He, along with Lee, tried to kick it out. Churchman ties up Jordan Stahl. Gerby for Seven. Trading places with Jordan now to the wall. In for Nathan Gerby as they grind a cycle. Back to the point. Belmore off the end wall. Kicks all the way around for Che Harrison. Kyle Laposo is on him. Laposo with a tight turn. And the Islanders get it out of their own zone. And Semin took it. He was shaking up going back to the bench. Watch him. Kyle Laposo shut down by Anton Hudobin. Out of the corner. The Islanders continue to pressure. Now it's played here. Way back in his own zone by Elias Lindholm. Jay Harrison has some time in space. Out to center ice, it's Riley Nash. Indirect pass intended for Lindholm. Matt Donovan is back for the Islanders. Moved by Nash. And back of the goal, dancing is Skinner. Matt Donovan is on him. Donovan now in control. Options along for Matt Karkner. Getting to it off the boards now, Johan Sundstrom. And it comes all the way back in the Carolina zone. John Michael Lyles turns away from Casey Sasikis. And now here's Jeff Skinner for the Hurricanes. Just about eight minutes gone in period one. Brock Nelson plays it along the boards. Carried out by Mike Helmo, and it comes all the way back in the hurricane zone. Helmo's one of the several young players I know Garth Snow is very, very high on. And, and the Islanders, more than anything, want to be patient with all of these young players because they think that's the biggest thing that has paid dividends with Oposo, a guy who was a healthy scratch at one point, and a lot of yeah. people thought that they might trade him. Patience was and is a virtue. Yeah, Helmo, one of those players out of the Ontario Hockey League, Brock Nelson. They have got a boatload of young players playing without their best player, John Tavares. 
who was injured in Sochi at the Olympics, a knee injury, and he's done for the season. Comes all the way back. Justin Falk away from Josh Bailey. The Hurricanes restart, being outshot 10-0 in period one, where it counts 3-0. Now it goes deep. In back of the goal goes by Drayson Bowman, accepted this way by Jay Harrison. Eric Stahl is lurking, broken up by Kevin Churchman, who takes away his stick, and now Thomas Hickey looks around. On the wall, the guy with two goals, Colin McDonald. Eric Stahl sends it high. Churchman has lost his stick. Eric Stahl now. In deep it goes for Andre Loktyanov. Out in front to Lusty. Now Eric, his shot, swallowed by Anders Nilsson. 10.48 left to go in the first period. An excursion by the New York Islanders. Two goals by Colin McDonald and also Cal Clutterbuck. 3-0. Back in the first, it's 3 nothing Islanders. Kim Ward started this game, but now Anton Hudovin has taken over the net position. But on Saturday in Winnipeg, Kim Ward made some sensational saves in their first period. 13 alone, and they were all dazzling saves, keeping the team in. And for our Geico quote, we hear from Coach Muller talking about just that. He says there are only certain goalies that are able to take a team to the Stanley Cup and win it. I think the biggest thing is getting healthy again. These types of things athletes go through. They give you the battle. They make you stronger, and you learn from it, guys. Well, Chantel, he, he certainly took a team to the Stanley Cup and won it in 2006 in the conference finals, but he's had trouble locating the word consistency. And we'll get to that point. Nilsson is down. Forged wide by Riley Nash. Elias Lindholm, a good job in back of the goal. Skinner now in control. Travis Hamanick, who has two assists already, defends him. Hamanick along the boards on Skinner. Dug out by Nash to the point. Ron Hainsey, he'll cradle it. Turned in by Nash. Broken up by Calvin DeHaan, moved by Travis Hamanick. A pinch by Carolina's John Michael Lyles, and that'll trap the zone, and now you can get back to your point. Well, Cam Ward's elite level is right there in the top five in the NHL. His problem has been health, yes, and his ability to do it for you know, significant, significant periods of time. I don't hang this start uh, on Cam Ward, but he's certainly a part of it, being ready to bring that effort home, and the Hurricanes just haven't been able to do it so far tonight. Along the boards now, Jordan Stahl, Brock Nelson picks it off, throws on the brakes. Kartner, the veteran. Now Clutterbuck, who has one of their three goals, elevates the puck, knocked down by Justin Falk. Andre Sakara. Intended for Nathan Gerby, it comes all the way back. This will be icing against Carolina. The Carolina Alehouse is the spot for cool bars. The next one will be April 1st. We'll be in Pittsburgh, Canes and Pens. You can go to North Raleigh, and you can log on to carolinahurricanes.com for more details. Well, this faceoff is on the other side than the one that the two goals were scored by McDonald and then Clutterbuck, so that's a step in the right direction in itself. There you go. There you go. It's karma, right? <laughs> But you have to describe it as something. This has been an unacceptable start by the Hurricanes here in the first 10 minutes and change. Now Thomas Hickey on the wall, carried out by Matt Martin. To center ice, body down by Sakara. Carried in by Churchman, blockered, and left there for a goal. Matt Martin has it leaked through Anton Hudobin, and it's 4-0 Islanders. Well, obviously, the Islanders came up the neutral zone with the speed that you desire, which allowed them to carry the puck. And, and Anton Hudobin, uh, you know, in, in Boston and where he's been a backup the last few years, has done a pretty good job coming off the bench, but it's not easy. Sakara tries to block the nice job by the Islanders of getting on sides. And Hudobin has no idea where Churchman's shot is. However, let's get away from the goaltending part of it. Harrison has his man. And this is a situation where I believe Eric Stahl is the first man back here. You know, he's been rotating between playing center and the wing, and I think there was just that assumption that who Dobin knew where that puck was and was going to control it, and that was the breakdown in coverage that led to an attacking zone player cashing in. Calvin DeHaan now coming back. 8.50 left to go in this first period. It's not a misprint. It's 4-0 Islanders in period one. Now it's laid out to center ice. They are changing, they being the Islanders, but they did it legally. Now, Jay Harrison through the center zone. He'll gain center ice and feed it in. It kicks off the glass, goes in the mesh, and we get a stoppage of play. He leads the NHL and always does in terms of hits. Matt Martin has a goal. 
for nothing. Islanders. Well, Cam Ward didn't start the game where he is now, but a couple of plays trip off faceoffs have been costly. Well, here's McDonald. Let's watch. <laughs> These are different players. This is not the same goal. Win the faceoff, wins the battle with Andre Sequeira. Scores. So that's the first goal. McDonald gets it. That's not McDonald, that's Clutterbuck. Does this look like the same replay? It does. This time it's Hainsey. Defenseman gets it through, nice wrister, traffic, a redirection, and a boot, and Clutterbuck scores. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, if you're not going to see that hockey is a series of one on one battles, it, it, you'll never see a more evident example than that. 827 left in period one. John Tripp and Chantel with you as always. We'll be in South Florida Thursday night. It'll start with Hurricanes Live right here at 7 p.m. Franz Nielsen darts in over the line, but Anders Lee was offside, so we get a stoppage. You mentioned Anders Lee, and uh, I can tell you, Gus Snow compared him to John McClare this morning. Says he can be the, right. the prototypical power forward out of Notre Dame. Yep. That fine collegiate university that's in the NCAA tournament that's beginning this week. Goes to the net. And, of course, Snow played with LeClaire in Philadelphia, so he knows him well. Really a, a fast track for that young man. He's 23. He played high school hockey in Minnesota. Played one year in the USHL and then Notre Dame. And all of this season in the American Hockey League with Bridgeport. And now a chance at the side of the goal. Brock Nelson tied up by Andre Sequeira. As the Islanders attempt to make it 5-0, and that one deflects out of play. Well, John, I don't come up with these game keys for my health. They're there for a reason, and let's just look at it. Take charge in the first. Well, that's self-explanatory. Justin Falk and Andre Sequeira have been on for three of the four goals against, and we just saw the two face-offs that were the direct reason for the first two goals of the hockey game. So, it's unfortunate, but uh, these three game keys have gone completely against the Hurricanes, and now it's just all about worrying about that next right thing. With this contract now with Justin Falk, he's a guy that his teammates will look to in very adverse situations like this to be a leader. Shots are 13-2, favoring the Islanders. Now Sasikas, in back of Anders Nilsson. Sundstrom tries to clear. He picked up his first NHL point with an assist on Sunday. Sasikas, Johan Sundstrom turning back off the boards. And it deflects in the Carolina bench, and we get a break in play. And, and for Andre Sequeira, he had an off night in Chicago, but then a heck of a bounce back night against the Winnipeg Jets. In, in all of our years working together, John, the, the Hurricanes have never had a defenseman in the top 10 in scoring among defensemen. He's in the top 10. Sandus Ozelinch, 2001-2002, uh, spent part of the season with Carolina, but then came over in that Brett Hedick and Kevin Adams deal, and he finished in the top 10. But Andre's got a chance to do it playing the whole season. The Hurricanes, we're going to power play bid here. Puck goes over the glass from Sunstrom. Delay of game on that young man. Jack Capuano got his team to the playoffs a season ago. It won't happen this year. But he has been very good for a lot of their young players, including his stint with Bridgeport in the AHL. As I said earlier in the broadcast, his general manager completely believes in him. And they had a rock bottom type. And you never know how the rest of this night is going to go. Uh, night against Minnesota last right. week. And they had some days off. And they took advantage of it. Hurricane power play number 29. Both overall and at home shot taken. Nilsson makes the save. The rebound is loose. Skinner, he scores! Jeff Skinner picks up the loose change. It's a power play goal, and the Hurricanes are on the scoreboard. You go back to New Year's Eve when the Hurricanes were down three goals in a desperate game against Carey Price and the Montreal Canadiens, and Skinner scored not one, but two power play goals. So again, it's the board side guy, Skinner, that's been a great spot to be. Two Islander goals and now Skinner. He started there and then he just wanted the puck and he battled for it. Latianoff, a heck of a cross seam pass. Look at the work from Lindholm in front and then getting there from Nash. And, and, and this was just, I think, a whole sequence of Jeff Skinner wanting the puck, coming from that board uh, side position and eventually getting it and giving this team life on the power play. Early in the power play, Jeff Skinner gets the goal. Mr. Skinner, goal number 27. Lindholm lays it back for Nash. He overskates. 
Anders Lee out to center ice. He'll fish it by Justin Falk and a pair of Minnesotans along with a snowbound get after it. Now Riley Nash along the boards cut off by Franz Nielsen. Inside for Lee tied up by Falk. Now Oposo jamming with Sakara out of the corner. Good look at Anders Lee who digs it out. It goes by the glove hand of Thomas Hickey and all the way back in the Islanders zone. Hickey once upon a time a first round pick and not a big defenseman out of the Western Hockey League by the Los Angeles Kings. Riley Nash and Andre Loktyanov get the assist on Skinner's 27 at 12.38. Jordan Stahl now will push it back in the Islanders zone. A steal. Semin goes to work. Up top now, Lyles lays it along for Semin. His shot a headhunter over the top of Anders Nilsson. Now it's moved by Ron Hainsey. Jordan Stahl flushed out by Kevin Churchman. This is Nathan Gerby. He'll dart. His shot off a stick off Kartner goes out of play. By scoring on the power play now, Kaniacs, you can stop by any participating Bojangles between 5.30 and 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and say, I'm a Kaniac and it's boat time. You get your free Bojangles Bowberry Biscuit. Log on to carolinahurricanes.com slash Bojangles for rules and participating locale. Good job of getting in the scrum and then getting that puck to the backhand where it was advantageous to be able to lock it. Easier to do that sometimes in the backhand. That's his 10th power play goal. That's more than twice as many as the guy who's second with the man advantage. And it's seven. Off the draw now, it's carried out by Brock Nelson. Lost his edge, got it ahead for Cal Flutterbuck out of the corner. Loose now at the side of the goal. Bailey centers one all the way back, and Matt Karkner will go D to D, where it's played by Matt Donovan. Broken up by Carolina's Alex Simmon. He'll start again. He lays it off for Jordan. Jordan over the line to the outside of Donovan. He'll shift gears. Throw a bit of snow out of the corner. He leaves it there. Karkner with Simmon on his backside. Bailey turns it over to Ron Hainsey, who slams it ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, Skinner with 10. As tough of a year as it's been on the power play, 10 power play goals. Simmon has five. He's in second. So that tells you something about Skinner and the man advantage, especially that he's been going through a very rough patch. Hopefully that'll give him a lift. Latiana darts in. Here's Harrison, his shot, a big rebound given up by Nilsson, and the Islanders will cover up. Casey Sasikis starts all the way back. Sasikis in the zone, centers went across. Mopped up by Brett Belmore, played by Yuri Talusti, and out they come. It's wide open. Here comes Loktyanov for a chance. He scores! Andre Loktyanov pulls Carolina within two. Look at Andre Loktyanov come underneath the puck. That, it starts with being in a good defensive position. Hamidek, who is the best shutdown defenseman on the New York Islander Hockey Club, not like him to misplay this puck. And how about the goal scorer's patience to just outweigh the lanky goaltender and find that area on the, the forehand. But I will tell you, Kurt Muller talked to Loktyanov yesterday about being responsible in his own end. Did you see the route way down low in his own end that creates the speed and then taking advantage of Hamnick's turnover? Just loose, wide open play all over the ice in this first period. Nilsson out of the corner. Right along Andre Loktyanov at 15.06. 4 2 Islanders. Nielsen. Leaves it for Thomas Hickey. A great look there. Loose along the boards. Oposo can't get started. Sakara for Carolina. Working Hickey. Off a skate as it went off. Riley Nash and it's carried out by Kyle Oposo. And off the pad of Anton Hudobin. Yuri Talusti and Brett Belmore get the assist. On Loktyanov, sixth goal. His second as a hurricane. And it comes at 15.06. Now it's played here by Matt Donovan. And the high slot interrupted by Elias Lindholm and all the way back out. 16 minutes gone in period one. A wild first period here at PNC as the Islanders are guilty of icing and will swing it back. Andre Loktyanov, we talked about him in our pregame show. He has impressed me. And he's playing these remaining 11 games to make an impression. His contract's up at the end of this year. You know, there are rumors that he might go back to the KHL. I believe he wants to be in the National Hockey League. And I like his defensive responsibility. And you look at his numbers, especially with Windsor and winning Memorial Cup, he had 33 points en route to that championship. And the coaches were talking to us this morning about the other side of the puck, and that's very good. 
and that was a key component in his goal that started way back in his own end. All right. Some positive emotion for the Carolina Hurricanes. Finally in this first period, Mr. Skinner on the power play, Andre Lakhtianov, and it's 4-2 Islanders. 23, you have a new team, you work both sides of the puck, trip, that's a good thing. Yeah, and it actually, Stahl had a tough start, does a good job getting back first, and Lakhtianov is actually trailing the play, but look at his route, come underneath the puck. Good play there from, I believe that's uh, Talusti there, just to up the puck, move it up the river, and Hamannick, does not play many pucks like that. He's an underrated shutdown guy, but it's a nifty play there to make him look pretty bad by Lakhtianov and then make the goaltender look the same. Shots are 14-6, favoring the New York Islanders. They scored the first four. Carolina, the last two. Eric Stahl on a cycle. Lakhtianov diagonally across for Ron Hainsey. He'll move it. Inside it goes. A good stick by Toulouse. Top of your screen, John Michael Lyles for Eric. He's denied as it's broken up by Brock Nelson. Fended off by Travis Hamannick, not out though. Hainsey moves it inside for Eric. Eric in back of Nilsson to the outside of Dahan. Eric Stahl stops, holds on to it. Puts a little deke on Dahan. It's broken up here by Cal Clutterbuck, and out it goes. See Lakhtian off there. He allows Eric Stahl to go for it more offensively because he was covering up. Bailey now camped out, cherry picking. Carolina was changing. He'll get it deep. Riley Nash in control. 2.47 left in this first period. And now Ron Hainsey will start again. The problem is, though, is that, you know, it's it's a player that was traded at the trade deadline and still a young player in Skinner that has sparked this nice little shot of life and hasn't been the leadership crew, and hopefully they can now jump on board. Let's hope so. Now along the boards. It's dug out. Nilsson will cover up. An all-new season of the panel is underway. Tonight, our group of NFL panelists see if Clemson's Todd Boyd is ready for the draft. The panel continues at 11 on Fox Sports South, presented by Hyundai Equess. So far tonight, Jeff Skinner wants the puck. You know, here he supports Nash below the goal line and, you know, catch, it catches a nice bounce off his crest and forces Nielsen, the goaltender, to make a nice save. Jordan Stahl and Matt Martin now getting situated for this face-off. Off the draw. Shot taken just wide. And a good one it was that time right off the face-off from Drayson Bowman. The line change there. That uh, to begin the game was Nathan Derby with Jordan and Senna. Alexander Senna on the attack. His pass off the stick of Travis Hamannick now Sakara. Lurking here is Alex Simmons. Simmons inside, knocked out of midair by Bowman. Moved by Jordan Stahl. Hamannick gets to it. And now Colin McDonald will try and clear. Hacked at by Jordan Stahl. Turning is Bowman. He tries to return the favor as they jockey along the boards. And finally, it pops out. The Islanders have gotten bigger. I know that they're very happy about that progression. And they feel that it's very important that uh, you know, they utilize uh, this enhanced size. Brett Belmore pressured by Anders Lee. Dug out by Franz Nielsen. We have a Nielsen, a Nielsen, and a Nelson in the same game tonight, Trip. Oh, boy. How about that? I had a physical yesterday, so I okay. had my ears clean. So All right. And we also have an Anders. We have an Anders and an Anders. How's that? Yeah. Boy. They both grew up on the River Andes. <laughs> Out to center, Oposo, broken up by Hainsey. Dead center, Oposo one more time, but it's Anders Lee, and he's offside. Hey, John, uh, St. Baldrick's between uh, periods. Uh, yes. And yes. Uh, what a special, special night. And, boy, a record, record amount of money raised for children's pediatric cancer before the game. You see all these great young Hurricanes fans that have shaved their heads to raise money for the fight against pediatric cancer. It's just absolutely exceptional. Well, the Hurricanes have been behind this for years, and my partner has, too, for a long time. Trip, I think it's about 10 years you've been involved with this organization as Nilsson now will control that puck and get another face off in his own zone. And many Hurricanes players have done it. Jane right. Hoppin is the uh, the wonderful representative for St. Baldrick's. And, you know, the kids are the true heroes. And what I've learned about these kids who are fighting incredible battles with this horrific disease is how positive they are. We need to learn from them. 
During the first intermission tonight, Chantel McCabe will MC a haircut, which is a very important moment, kind of the pinnacle here that they do before the crowd. Highlighting all the efforts here for St. Baldrick's out to center ice. Left just outside the line. Brought along here by Riley Nash. Forts right in on Nilsson. As it pinballs around, it's a loose puck. And Josh Bailey now will knock it back for Travis Hamanick. And they start again. Only 16 seconds left in period one. No question the best line has been Nash, Skinner, and Lindholm here in this first period for the Hurricanes. That's right. Calvin DeHaan will lay it off. It's broken up by Jordan Stahl, Drayson Bowman. Three seconds on the clock. Easily detected by Anders Nilsson. We get a stoppage with three-tenths of a second left in the first. I would think that Hudobin will be lifted for the extra attacker here with just .3 left. I, all three of these guys have been pretty, have been noticeable in the second half of this period. I love what I'm seeing from Skinner because he just done a lot of nights of late. He's looked apprehensive. He's looked like he hasn't wanted the puck, and he's wanted it so far in this one. And there goes Hudobin. Uh, they don't have... They only had five guys on the ice. That was a late adjustment by the Hurricanes bench. Well, the coaches won't like it on both sides, really, and the Hurricanes have still plenty of work to do as they find themselves down 4-2 after 20. Jeff Skinner will be Chantel McCabe's guest. She delivers the PNC Bank first intermission right after this on Fox Sports Carolina. So the Canes head out for the second period after a wild first here at BNC Arena. 4-2, the Islanders have the lead as we get set for period number two. Coors Light cold hard facts on the subject of wild scoring, which we saw. Carolina, four goals for, three against, against Buffalo on January 25th. That's the most in a period. Tonight with six against the Islanders in terms of this game. And the most recent, March the 8th at New Jersey. Six times they've scored five goals, respectively, among the teams in a period. Well, I look back to the game New Year's Eve, down 3 nothing against the Montreal Canadiens and Carey Price going into the third period. And that, at that point, was the rock bottom of the season. It was Jeff Skinner that scored the first two goals that eventually led to a come-from-behind overtime victory. So uh, you don't want to ever be in these rock-bottom spots, but good to see Skinner respond. John Forslund, Trip Tracy, Chantel McCabe. Excellent job with Marshall Taylor, St. Baldrick's between periods as it kicks out to center ice. The Hurricanes down 4-2, to two, the final meeting. They've won the last six games against the New York Islanders, all three this season. And now moving back is Calvin DeHaan, and each team will head to Florida after this. Carolina will see the Panthers on Thursday, the same night the Islanders will be in Tampa. Let's take a look at the first period numbers brought to you by Buffalo Brothers. Oh, man, now I want wings. Well, you look, the first two Islander goals were off the face-off wins, yet Carolina actually wins 74% of the face-offs in the first period. So I guess that tells you that some face-offs are more important than others, my friend. It does. They were vital in terms of those goals against. Now a block by Oposo. And Talusti whistles one wide of Anders Nilsson. Along the boards brought out here by Calvin DeHaan as the Islanders now clear it all the way back in the Kane zone. Andre Sakara paired with Justin Falk in control. And now Andre Loktyanov who scored in period one sealed off by Josh Bailey. And Falk is on it now back in his own zone. Again the night talking about Justin Falk's fine new contract. This is where guys look to him. They will look to him now and in the future of how you react to tough situations like this. They need life and leadership in action from guys like 27 who was on for several of the goals against like Sakara was in the first. Josh Bailey with a blind pass that's pushed out of the zone by Thomas Hickey. The Hurricanes attempt to get to it. Kevin Churchman playing his third NHL game broken up by Elias Lindholm. Churchman again will punch it out of play and we'll see here. Referees will get together and determine if this puck grazed the glass or not. It may be the second delay a game. No. Uh, yeah, they're calling it, John. New York Fire penalty number 24, delay a game. And Skinner's unit. Let's watch down here, right beside the line. Referees get together and determine that that puck does not hit a, a New York a, a Carolina stick and does not graze the glass. And Skinner 
from this board side position. Other end scored to the power play in the first. 136 the time of the penalty. Carolina one out of one with their power play. Raktionov sails it by Lindholm played this way by Jeff Skinner. His shot was off Hamannick wide. Now the Hurricanes set it up in the person of Riley Nash. Lindholm off Hamannick. Calvin DeHaan drives to get it out. Hamannick now for the Islanders. Number three in white. Casey Sasikas not out. Held in by Nash one timer. Hansen denied by Nilsson. And it's cleared out by Travis Hamannick. Uh, a guy that played in Moose Jaw and then in Brandon in the Western Hockey League. He's a big time piece of the Islanders future. He's a defenseman actually that plays in all situations. Scored a beautiful power play goal which is rare for him Sunday against Columbus. They signed him to a long term extension this season. Donovan back to play it. They had two very good young defensemen. He along with Andrew McDonald who had to be traded. He's a pending UFA's in Philadelphia now. And a cross shot taken blocked on the way through. Good shot by Eric Stahl in the dead slot. Now Jordan Semen. He scores. Alexander Semen on the receiving end pass from Jordan Stahl. And the Hurricanes are within one. Semen works on quick one-timers with Justin Falk at the end of every warm-up before games. Here he actually, he's the guy that comes in and makes it a third man and gets the puck. Keep your eye on that area. Jordan Stahl is right in front of the net right now. He eventually is going to corral this puck. Good play from Lyles. Coming down low. Active. The goaltender probably could have got a piece of that centering attempt from Jordan Stahl. Heck of a saucer pass and an absolute skilled finish. Very quickly by Semin. Semin works on shots just like that at the end of every warm-up before he goes to the dressing room. We saw that tonight. We went downstairs and did our game open from the corner tonight. And Alexander Semin has scored his 22nd goal of the season. It goes by Elias Lindholm. Now the Hurricanes have come all the way back with three unanswered goals after surrendering the first four. Through center ice, Lindholm now will scale it ahead. Matt Martin has one of four Islander goals tonight out to center ice. Goes on, on and off the stick of Ryan Strom, and it comes all the way back. Sakara took care of him. It's sealed off by Martin. Loose in the slot. Thomas Hickey, Colin McDonald, shut down by Anton Hudobin. A backhander. Off the shoulder of Hudobin. Hickey by Nash. Now McDonald off a body. Blocked by Justin Fulton as the Islanders come to life. What a hockey game. The very definition of seesaw action. Riley Nash, three on two. Over the line, they cut again. Skinner mishandling it. Broken up here by Kevin Churchman, who took a hit from Pat Dwyer. Thomas Hickey in his own zone. Skate to stick. Ryan Strom. Mike Elmo, and it's broken up. Laid along that time by Ron Hainsey for Pat Dwyer. Jordan Stahl was in early, and we get a stoppage on the offside. What a finish. You see the top of uh, seven stick? That's an, an extension that I've talked about before. Jordan Stahl makes a heck of a play. All of the Islanders were on the same side of the ice, and and you can see that Semin can converse very well in English, and he is able to recap the play with Jordan. I've always liked the chemistry of those two together, dating back to uh, December, and I and I want to see them play together for a period of time. Jordan Stahl, along with John Michael Lyles, get the assist on the goal by Semin. Is 22nd at 2:42. Now back of the goal, it's dug out. Sundstrom through the slot now. Travis Hamannick walks it for the Islanders. Goes by Johan Sundstrom, and it's played here by Alex Semin. Take a look at the shots on goal. Semin over the line. Lays it along for Hainsey. Ron Hainsey from the boards. Hit on Nilsson, who squeezes those pads together and hangs on. Take a look at the power play tonight and what it has done in the last four games. It's been a build. Uh, we could go tonight against Columbus where Loktyanov scored on the man advantage. It started to look better and better, and then Semin scored with a two-man advantage in Chicago. And then a, a big-time goal from Sakara to Jordan on a breakaway in Winnipeg. So what has ailed Carolina the man advantage all year has probably had one of its best, if not best, stretches. Matt Gartner is hard-pressed by the forechecking of Jeff Skinner. At the point, the Hurricanes move it ahead. It's loose as we see Riley Nash in control. 
with a spindling puck inside now for Skinner. Goes off of Franz Nielsen, loose in back of the goal. Played here by Karkner. Left by Anders Lee. And getting to it is Riley Nash. Nash, Lindholm. His shot goes high. Loose this way for Anders Lee. Will take a hit from Lindholm and they get the puck out. Lindholm dating back to when this game was most adverse at 4 0. He had the net front presence on the Hurricanes' first goal from Skinner. So maybe a young leader that wants to grab the bull by the horns and show that that type of start is the very definition of unsatisfactory. He had a great chance there. Shots are now 16 13 favoring the Islanders. The Hurricanes have fought all the way back in that regard. And they've done that all year. I mean, this is just a synopsis of their year, not getting off in front of it the way you want to, but always showing resolve uh, when you think that there might be a big sack. So there, right there, is the time capsule, I think, of, of this regular season. Belmore playing catch with Harrison through the middle. It was intended for Loktyanov. Played by Anders Nilsson. Out of the corner now Loktyanov. Inside Eric Stahl. He'll stop. He has to lose the on the flank shot. Taken Loktyanov. Good stop by Nilsson. And the Islanders now get it out. Through the center zone. Putterbuck. Sails it ahead. A good look at Josh Bailey going to work on Brett Belmore. It goes by Yuri Toulouse. He attempts to locate the puck. And now he forges that one out to center ice. And the Hurricanes restart. Continue to like Loktyanov. And, you know, I mentioned the Memorial Cup team. Adam Henrique was on that team. They're the same birth year. And Loktyanov outscored him by a sizable margin. So there's the chance, especially when you look at uh, the fact that he doesn't cheat, that it can come together. And I love the fact that Igor Larionov is his agent because he should guide him very, very well. Islanders able to change on the fly. Ron Hainsey inserts around the board. Ryan Stormont pops out. Off the stick of Nilsson as it was played by Drayson Bowman. McDonald out to center ice. You're looking at Matt Martin. A handoff for Ryan Strom. Hit hard by Ron Hainsey. Hainsey out of the corner. Hit by Strom. But Carolina, as we see, back out to neutral ice. Carried at the line by Patrick Dwyer, and he'll go deep. Bowman saw those shifts late in the first period uh, with Semin and Jordan back on the line. He started with Gerby back up with the two guys that he began the night with. Carolina now coming all the way back. Andre Sakara. Quarterbacks out to center ice in full flight. Justin Fulk to the outside of Kartner. Back of the goal this way. Played here along the boards by Alexander Semin. Semin tries to make it happen on Casey Sasikis. Seals him off along the boards. Helmo is there, 43 and white. Now it's played by Sakara. Here it comes. Off a stick, it goes high. Kartner golfing one. Wedged by Jordan Stahl. Sasikis now is away for the Islanders. And out they go. Matt Donovan. Donovan over the line. Mike Helmo with a shot. Picked off easily by Anton Hudobin. 12.27 left to go in the second period. Carolina, two for two in the power play here tonight. The latest from Alexander Semin. The Kings within one. We're back in a second. I'm with Anton Dorrance. You sounded the horn, the siren before the game, and you have such a history of successful teams with your UNC women's soccer teams. 22 national championships. That is quite uh, a pride of thing to, of, to be very proud of. But I want to ask you, you have played inline hockey for over 20 years, and you have a unique story of how that started. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, Mia Hamm was getting married. It was uh, in the middle of the winter. Uh, we were in Chapel Hill, and we were trying to think of something for all these athletes to do. It was too cold for soccer, so we th thought of renting these skates, uh, finding a, a couple tennis courts, and, and that's when I started playing hockey, and uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, I still play hockey, inline hockey to this day, and it started uh, the day before Mia Hamm's wedding. And, of course, what was hilarious was uh, here the wedding party shows up, and these are all, you know, incredible athletes, Olympic-caliber athletes, a lot of these young women and of course they're bleeding from head to toe uh, uh, because the, we're not very good skaters so we spent half the game you know wiping out but we had the time of our lives and I still play to this day and it started the day before Mia got married. Very very unique now as I said 22 national titles that is quite the feat. What does it take to have a winning culture? Well, obviously, you need the athletes. Uh, uh, I recruit for a remarkable university, the University of North Carolina, and we try to find the best kids we can. And then our idea is to bring them in and, and try to develop them. Uh, uh, we do it by competing. We have our own philosophy of player development. Uh, in fact, uh, during a hurricane uh, event, 
Uh, the St. Louis coach uh, was talking about how he was using our competitive principles to coach his hockey team with. My brother saw this, and it was such good PR for us. We're stealing it from the telecast, and we're putting it on our website. So we even have a, an NHL hockey connection because this guy liked our training platforms. I thought that was kind of cool as well. Ken Hitchcock. Yes, well, thanks for joining us, and best of luck in the future and with that inline hockey. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. John, back to you. All right, thank you, Chantel. Hanson Dorrance, he's an absolute legend at Chapel Hill. And, and Ken Hitchcock, that's a very true story. He identified successful programs in a bunch of different sports and, and tried to be a sponge of, of, of what it is about their culture. And I'd say whatever uh, Ken and the Blues extracted has turned out to be pretty good because they may win the President's Trophy. Carried in by Brock Nelson, a rap chance at the top of the crease, goes off the crossbar. Like this game, it stays out. Maybe Anton Hudoba knew we were talking to a, a legendary soccer coach because he, he headed this, you know, like he was Ronaldo or Pele, and then it looks like it may go up in there and off his backside and in the net. My gosh, what a wild game. Good job by uh, staying on sides by the Islanders. and. You know, the Islanders against Columbus, that goes off the bar, off his back, and the, the wonderful body language. But off of Nash, off the bar, off of Hudobin, somehow stays out of the net. Oh, my. And, and watching wow. the Islanders game, it, get, oh, it's, it lodges itself wow. right on yeah, top. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, wow. I can tell you, that is where New York beat Columbus, eventually 2-0 on Sunday. They were better in front of their own net and got to the front of Bogrovsky's net. And we have seen it, partner. Remember, when it goes on top of the goal, it can get knocked out. It doesn't automatically mean it's blown dead. If he covers it, if Hudobin reaches back with the glove, okay, they'll blow it dead. But if it sits on the top of the goal like this, a player can punch it and play will continue. Well, hang on. What if the Hurricanes player there covers, that's in the crease, technically. Right. So if you cover that puck on top of the net, that could be a penalty shot. All kinds of violations could have happened there, but everybody staves it off. This has been an unbelievable night here. Seven goals have been scored. Four by the Islanders who took a 4-0 lead. Hurricanes have scored the last three. Mike Halmo goes to work on John Michael Lyles. In back of Anton Hudobin in relief of Cam Ward, who surrendered the first three. Amazing. Life comes full circle. Anson Dorrance on our air because my girlfriend in college was a great soccer player at Harvard, and she was recruited very heavily by him. And so I always heard once we started dating about this guy, Anson Dorrance. And uh, she ended up playing professionally, and it's just wild. The life, uh, the, the twists and turns it takes, and good luck to him and everything he does at Carolina. This game is twisted and turned. Take a look at this. 18 players have factored in with a point tonight. 10 on the Islanders' side, 8 for the Hurricanes, and we're just about halfway through. Yeah, a little bit more high scoring than uh, since soccer seems to be the flavor the last few minutes. Where Semin with a screenshot that goes astray, and now Kevin Churchman, the rookie, hampered by Semin on the way out. Churchman recovers. Play will continue. Kevin Churchman now forechecked by Carolina's Alex Semin. Semin along the board, shakes free. Rap chance denied by Nilsson. All the way back for Justin Falk. His shot. Swallowed by Anders Nilsson. We get a stoppage of play. 9.56 left to go in the second period. Islanders four and the Canes three. The phrase is he's feeling the game, and when we see Jeff Skinner going down that track, it's a good thing. Well, on his first goal of the game, and the Hurricanes first goal, he just hunted the puck right off of the faceoff, and he had good work from his line mates, uh, Nash and, and Lindholm, getting to the front of the net. And, you know, he's wanted the puck every shift. He's fought for the puck every shift. And he's about 10 days removed of receiving that hit from Dougie Hamilton, a good, clean, but thunderous hit in Boston, that I worry, you know, if he got through that okay. And this is a heck of a response because after, you know, being one of the best goal scorers, if not best goal scorer in December, he's gone in quite a drought. Puck is swatted along by Anton Hudobin. Jordan Stahl a give back for Andre Sakara. Carolina out to neutralize Jordan getting it from Senna to the outside of Hamannick through the blue and out loose all the way back 
Laid out to center by Kyle Oposo. Moving up here on Sakara. Carried in by Anders Lee as Franz Nielsen out in front. Out of the corner, Oposo holding onto it. He'll stop and start on Semin. Leave it there for the rookie, Anders Lee. And unable to get there is Travis Hamanick. And you see it come all the way back out. 9-12 left to go in the second period. John Tripp and Chantel with you as always. We're on the road Thursday night. South Florida, Canes and Panthers starting with Hurricanes Live right here at 7 p.m. And the Hurricanes come home and take on the Columbus Blue Jackets on Saturday. Now Clutterbuck out in front behind Brock Nelson off the stick of Lyles. Nelson broken up by Riley Nash out of the corner. Clutterbuck is hit by Lyles. It's loose along the wall and moved ahead by Matt Kartner. Stolen by Nash. He springs Skinner who's away. Jeff Skinner with a shot. Fought off by Nelson. It was high in the air. It goes in the screen, so we get a break in play as Jeff Skinner had all kinds of room. Well, you see both sides. Ontario Hockey League first-round products doing their thing. Nash gets it up to a Kitchener Ranger and Jeff Skinner. Boy, Skinner does an excellent job of protecting the puck and forcing the goaltender, Nilsson, to make a heck of a save. Here's DeHaan. He came out of Oshawa. The general program makes a great first pass and creates a two-on-one. He's had shoulder injuries, but he's healthy now. He has a bright future. So two very fine products in that league. Calvin DeHaan gets a rest, as we see. And off the draw, Jay Harrison moves it for the Hurricanes. Here's Eric Stahl. Stopping him back of the goal. Left for Yuri Tulusti. He's checked by Colin McDonald. And that's two of the four Islander goals. Eric out in front. Mopped up by Thomas Hickey. And out they go. Brett Belmore is back to get it. And there's that, you're right, that first pass uh, capabilities of DeHaan who was taken. 12th overall in the first round. Skinner a few picks prior to that. Both out of that uh, OHL finally. Andre Loktyanov to Brett Belmore. Boomeranging that broken stick. Now it's carried by Matt Martin. Martin off the paddle of Anton Udobin. Off his head again. Out in front. And it was batted down with a high stick. So we get a stoppage of play. What more can we see tonight? I don't know. There's plenty of time left, so anything can happen. Here we go. I mean, boomerangs are really a lost weapon, but there you see it. And Belmore does a nice job of recovering and has, see who's back? Now Harrison drives the far post, but Loktyanov's there. And then a puck nearly goes on, see who Dobin knows now. He's, he's got to make sure that anything, anything, is going high and seems to have eyes to try to redirect off of his main frame. Hurricanes play a little chip and chase as they get it deep. Nilsson has to stay in that trapezoid. That forces the play in the Islanders' zone as Falk is given a rough ride by Helmo. It goes inside to Han. Sasikis knocked out of midair by Helmo and all the way back out. Justin Falk now for Andre Sakara as they start again. 7.27 left in the second period. Hurricanes down by one at one time. They were down by four in the first period. Calvin DeHaan, Mike Helmo, Helmo over the line. He's guarded by John Michael Lyles as he ties him up. Shot taken, Hudobin said no on the bid by Casey Sasikis. Helmo had a hit on Niall Yakupov who played in Sarnia that was legendary uh, when they were both juniors. Now they try and get it out. It's Donovan played here by Franz Nielsen. Inside the line, Lyles. Nielsen a handoff. Karkner from well out. Hudobin handles that one. He'll freeze. All right, Trip. let's take a look at tonight's Hurricanes teeth rattling check of the game presented by Dr. Tom Long, team dentist for the Carolina Hurricanes, Ron Hainsey. Legal play because the puck is just vacated. And he is able to avoid contact with the head. The Islander player is just partially turned, so it's a good clean hit. Puck there. The right kind of contact, and he causes the turnover. Nice work. Face off, as we see in the Carolina zone. Manny Malholtra getting low to win it back for Justin Falk. Lose the four checker. Hard on him that time was Anders Lee. Falk through center ice. Knocked down by Hickey. Moved along here and carried and centered that time for. The late trailer. Talusti trying to drop it back for Pat Dwyer. And the Islanders are away. Lee out in front. Nielsen. Hudobin said no. And a penalty will follow. Now a tough pinch from Sakara that leads to a, a two-on-one that was only because the Islanders had very, very good puck movement. And Hudobin 
Guys behind the net, way back there is Sakara. Nobody, oh, I'm sorry, there's Sakara right there. Excuse me. So he pitches, all three forwards were not in a position to cover. Good puck movement from the Islanders. And we've seen this before, it's atypical. There you see the penalty in the process from Toulouse, the hook. But Hudobin's not against the, the two-pad slide, but head first. Usually you see it the other way around. First power play upcoming here for the Islanders. They are 18th overall, 22nd on the road. Carolina improving. They are 15th now with their kill, 18th at home. The Hurricanes have killed off 15 out of 16 in the last five. Ron Hainsey right up the gut and out as they kill some time early. And nobody has better entries, I think, uh, really in the league. Franz Nielsen very good at trailing the play and being able to get possession without having to dump pucks in. Along the boards now. Out of that pile up. Broken up by Patrick Dwyer who has two shorthanded goals this season. He'll dump it out. Watched a lot of clips of Nielsen over the last few years. He works with uh, Doug Wade, who we know very well from the Hurricane Stanley Cup Championship team to try to really just trail the play enough to be able to back defenders off. You saw that statistic. That's in the last seven games for the Hurricanes. Nash tries to make it happen. Franz Nielsen coming all the way back, and here come the Islanders. 69 seconds left on their first power play, but they do cross the line offside. You see the way you just trailed the play a little bit there? Good rush shorthanded from Carolina. And you could see Nielsen's uh, skills here. His favorite player, he has the puck right now, just trails enough that the defense has to back off and then knows when to distribute the puck to the outside. And that's very close to a clean entry. Love Zetterberg, they both played for Timra, one of those fine Swedish Elite League teams. Goes off the stick of Josh Bailey. It comes all the way back from ice level. A good look at Justin Falk. Clutterbuck is on him. Cal Clutterbuck looking for Bailey. Back to the point. A quick pass. Hamannick this way to Hahn. Calvin DeHaan blocked by Josh Bailey. Good break for Carolina. Manny Malhotra dumps it out. Good read from Malhotra picking the right time to leave the, the weak side uh, defenseman. The point man had come down and clear. DeHaan a spring pass as they cross now. Shot out of the zone by Brett Belmore. A hand pass is called here. 29 seconds left in the power play. 4.56 left in period two. Very good kill so far for the Hurricanes. A good look at DeHaan. De Bailey is another guy that Gar Snow, I know, wants to be patient with. He's 24, I believe, right now, a former first-round pick. Hey, Gar Snow thinks that he can be, you know, he's not saying he can be Ron Francis, but he says he has some tendencies to him. They just want to make sure they never give up on players that go somewhere else and then become the players they projected them to be. He was really good in the playoffs last year, and it looked like an awakening for Josh Bailey, but this season has been a little bit substandard now. Lee in the corner, back to the point. DeHaan whipped across for Hamannick. His shot sealed off by Hudobin. Bowman not out. DeHaan again. Oposo, he'll address it. Calvin DeHaan sets up shot. Seven seconds left in the power play. Travis Hamannick inside it goes for Franz Nielsen. Up top, it's DeHaan. He'll walk the line. Calvin DeHaan, one-timer Hamannick. Caught off by Hudobin, fanned on by Nielsen. Patrick Dwyer has it, and Toulouse is out of the box. Three on two if they hurry. Toulouse with a shot wide of Nielsen, and it comes all the way back out in the Carolina zone where it's played by John Michael Lyles. Good awareness of knowing when Toulouse is coming out of the box, immediately made it a three on two, and he got the shot. Andre Lakhtianov forges one off Anders Nielsen, who melts it down, and we get a break in play. 3.59 left to go in the second period. Anton Hudobin fighting his way through. Carolina is down by one. Well, Jack Capuano thought he would have his best player coming out of the Olympics, but think not. John Tavares injured in Sochi. A knee injury done for the season for the Islander captain. Well, one of the things that, and there are many, that make a hard trophy finalist of last year special is that, you know, he is setting the standards in Long Island. There's been a big hiccup this year where they expect to win and, and creating that culture I think that makes them looking forward to their future moving into Brooklyn and you see how dependent they are on his services and you know a guy that has turned skating from a weakness into a complete strength just with his work ethic off the ice. The center ice now it kicks off the skate of Elias Lindholm 340 left in the second period the Islanders are offside as they cross that will halt play. Mikhail Oposo 
probably should have been on the United States team. Yeah, and, uh, and, and listen, this is a guy a couple of years ago that was a healthy scratch, and everybody was whispering the Islanders are going to trade him. They decided not to. He came into camp, and he was the guy that drove the bus and maybe even drove Tavares. And then they decided to trade Matt Molson to try to upgrade their team for Thomas Vanek. Maybe, you know, they didn't have as good of an idea about how that would disrupt the chemistry like it did. That trade obviously backfired. They were trying to improve their team. Uh, but Poso has shown the commitment that maybe he lacked to start the season on time. Here comes Colin McDonald. It's tipped wide out in front by Justin Falk, who gets to it, takes a hit from Matt Martin, a loose puck. As we see Ryan Strome fielded by Matt Martin. Martin dogged on the play by Eric Stahl, McDonald, and Falk. They engage in that corner. It kicks out, and now the Islanders hunt it down. They score! Matt Martin with his second goal tonight, and what a pass by Ryan Strome. 5 3 Islanders. Boy, that's the fourth out of five goals that Andre Sikara and Justin Falk have been on for. And it's the Eric Stahl line, but Eric Stahl was not the first guy back. It's Lakhtianov. So this is just a two on two in the corner. You're good right now. So Andre goes, so boy, Falk just slow getting to the front of the net. But both Lakhtianov and Justin Falk, or sorry, and, and Andre Sikara go to the same guy. And it's a heck of a look there to be able to find Martin in front of the net. But to me, that's a classic three-on-three -three down low where you have to make sure if you give any type of time and space, give it below the goal line, not right in the crease area. Good puck movement and the one-timer from New York. Second goal of this game for Matt Martin is sixth of the season. Jordan Stahl wiped in. Nathan Gerby at the side of the goal, and Carolina is down by one. Well, the Hurricanes scored their biggest goal of the night in Winnipeg right after Winnipeg scored a big goal. So below the goal line at one end, did the Islanders win the battle? Here, Carolina was at Jordan Stahl has had a key part in both goals scored here. What a skill play from Nathan Gerby. And I can tell you, if you think practice habits make perfect, Gerby works with Rod Brindamore on just about all days that he can. Sharp angle, quick shots, quick looks at the net to be able to elevate. He works on it all the time. So if you think how you practice is not how you play, you're wrong. Hamanek with a shot that goes high right off the faceoff. Nine goals so far. Out to center ice, Riley Nash. Gains the zone on Calvin DeHaan. He'll try and move it deep. Moved along, but not out. Hainsey with a shot blocked in front by Calvin DeHaan. And the Islanders advance back out to center ice. So the first goal scored was Matt Martin of the Islanders, his seventh. The second goal tonight from Ryan Strom, Colin McDonald at 16.57. And at 17.19, Nathan Gerby. And that one handcuffs Josh Bailey. Otherwise, it's six four Islanders. I think it's safe to say that uh, some of the breakdowns for both these hockey clubs would be consistent with two clubs that are in all likelihood not going to be part of the postseason. Out to center now. Bailey in control. Played along for Cal Clutterbuck, who stops, pulls up, double teamed on the way through. In a battle, he wins it. He gets it all the way back in the game zone, and now they regroup. Harrison out to center ice for seven. Two on two and a crisscross. Seven walks in for a chance. Here it is. And it's poked along at the defense as Donovan and Churchman got back for the Islanders. Kevin Churchman out to neutralize. Alex Semin passes across now for Jordan Stahl. From the center zone, the Hurricanes get it deep. And when I talk about the postseason, it's my belief the Hurricanes to have any chance have to go 11-0 because that would get them 93 points. You know, teams like Washington, some other pushes, uh, you know, the Rangers and Flyers, and the Rangers in particular the last week, I think it would take at least that. Skinner holding on to it. A penalty upcoming against the Islanders. Falk fanning on it. Sasikis will get to it. And Carolina will get their third power play. And their power play has been quite good over the last week. And this is going to be a hold where they just are able to draw it with Islanders a work ethic 24, holding. on the four check. 
Skinner has been as energetic of a player as they've had. He draws the penalty there. I'm trying to see if I, I don't know if I, I see a hold in that sequence, quite honestly, but when you're working the type of uh, way that Jeff has tonight, you're gonna get those breaks. Jay Harrison with a shot. Anders Nilsson hanging on to that one. As Harrison hit it right on the screws, 36.9 seconds left in the second period. A good face-off win, and, and again, Skinner uh, on that board side position. Lindholm wins that, or no, I'm sorry, Riley Nash wins that draw, but Skinner, or Lindholm's right in front of the net. So the, these uh, young bucks on this, what has been their first unit power play, you know, create a good chance here. And here you have two righties to take the draw on this side, which is very advantageous. Face off one by Brock Nelson. Hamannick now will play it along the boards. Loktyanov in control. Harrison will settle it down. 29 seconds left. Loktyanov inside now. Riley Nash. He retreats inside Lindholm. And it kicks wide of Nilsson. This way now it's Jeff Skinner. He'll dust it off. 17 seconds left in the period. Jeff Skinner inside for Lindholm who walks it. Sets up a man and a good stick that time by Cal Clutterbuck. And out they go. Good read coming down by Clutterbuck. We've seen a couple of those reads from four penalty killers. In the corner, Nash off a body off Calvin DeHaan, and that'll do it. Riley Nash will be Chantel McCabe's guest, but she has the PNC Bank second intermission, and the wild night here in Raleigh continues after 40 minutes. The New York Islanders 5 and the Carolina Hurricanes 4. Stay tuned for the PNC Bank second intermission right after this on Fox Sports Carolina. Ready for the third period. The Islanders 5, the Hurricanes 4. The freeze cam is brought to us by Frost Brew, Coors Light. Well, you like a little sauce, John, here? Because here's a little sauce. Both uh, the Islander player and the goaltender have made the only chance that this pass has of getting to seven be elevated. Beautiful. Lands flat right at the right time. And an absolute launching one-timer. That's gorgeous. The last 10 games for Jordan. 12 points. Two helpers here tonight. A game that started 4-0 favoring the New York Islanders. The Hurricanes would then score two goals in the second period. That would put them in a position as to where they're at right now as you take a look at Alexander Semin in his last 25 games. Kevin Churchman in the penalty box. He will start there. The Hurricanes have the power play as we start this third period. What a wild spelling for Churchman. Carolina starts on the power play. Andre Sakara, John Michael Lyles, Jordan Stahl, Eric Stahl, Alex Senna. Jordan now through the middle. Lays it along for Eric. Eric to the outside. Pulls up. Back it goes for Lyles. He'll walk the line. Eric in control. Side of the goal, Jordan. Up top again for Lyles. This way, Andre Sakara. His shot wide of Anders Nilsson. Played here by John Michael Lyles. Off a stick, corralled by Sakara. A give back by Jordan. Fielded off the wall by Semin. Now Eric to the outside of DeHaan and Clutterbuck. Back it goes for Lyles. Point to point, Sakara. Now Alexander Semin. He'll walk it, hold on to it. Semin in the high slot. Eric Stahl had his stick thwarted by Cal Clutterbuck, and it skips out. Sakara along the wall now for Alexander Semin, who darts. Button hooks away from the pack, lets it fly, blocked in front. Good block it was that time, getting up slowly. Thomas Hickey, Jordan, off the stick of Travis Hamannick. They go to the corner. Jordan now peppered on the way out. Held in by Sakara, fighting off Sasikis. Dug out by Jordan, but off the stick of Andre Sakara and back out. Yeah, Jordan was a slow starter like the rest of his team in this game, but he has come alive and has been a noticeable player in the last, uh, well, I'm going to call it 22 minutes. Now the puck is reversed. Played along the boards now by Ryan Strom in the skates of Matt Donovan. Forged out by Hamannick, stolen by Carolina's Jeff Skinner. Over the line, dragging. He has room. Nilsson maybe his best save in this hockey game. Now to the corner, Riley Nash. Justin Falk with a shot. Skinner, tough angle off of Nilsson, and it goes out of play. 
Well, Skinner has been a threat every time he's been on the ice, and you're right. We'll get to the block first from the former first-round pick, Nilsson. Not a big guy, but here he's able to make a key block. And he paid for it, maybe right on top of the kneecap, right on where the knee pad ends. Nilsson here was patient. You know, he's played small at times, not here. And Skinner was literally in the garden spot, and then Jeff quickly took a puck off the end boards and, and challenged him again. The puck goes into the netting off the Islander goaltender. Added a second assist on Carolina's goal scored by Nathan Gerby to make it 5-4 to four Islanders. Ron Hainsey picking up the assist on Carolina's fourth goal. Now comes all the way in. Directing traffic as Anton Hudobin in relief of the starter Cam Ward. Picked off by Franz Nielsen. Pickpocketed by Andre Loktyanov. Loktyanov curls. Blows a tire but gets it deep. Inside for Patrick Dwyer. Loktyanov turns. Shoots one. Off Nielsen wide. Played here by Calvin DeHaan. He's pinned. Nielsen for the Islanders with help from Lee. They get it out. Loktyanov has a smart little play. He's right inside the offensive blue line. Both of his line mates are deep. And he thought about going to the middle of the ice. But if, if that doesn't work, it's an odd man rush and it might be a, a, a dagger for the goal. In the center zone, picked off by Johan Sundstrom. Isisikis, Carolina goes D to D. Jay Harrison, a quick up. It's Jordan Stahl over the line, but both parties are in early. Alex Simmon, Nathan Gerby, and now Simmon shows his frustration on Mike Helmo. Well, the way to channel the effort right now is to pour it on on the four check. Let's take a look at uh, Simmons' fellow Russian, Loktyanov. You know what Bob Gorman's doing? I think he's switching a skate blade here. See here, he, nice job, tenacity, hounding the puck, but as you follow right here, see he thought about going high here, but low, that would be a high risk play because he didn't have support. And then he blew a tire. So this was a real cerebral situation here because if that doesn't convert, the Islanders have an odd man rush. And he, what he's doing right now is Bob Gorman is switching his skate blade. You see him locating Loktyanov skate blade. He lost an edge there, and that's that power trigger system where you don't actually have to go to the locker room for the skate sharp. You showed us that. Where were we? Montreal? You bet, and it's yeah. tough to pull that trigger. Gorman does it very, very well. He actually cut his hand doing it on the road trip, and... Gorman has always paid the price to make the play. We all do. Now it's cleared in. Hudobin moving it around the boards. Back out. 16.45 left in this third period. John Tripp and Chantel with you as always. We're in South Florida Thursday. Brock Nelson throws on the brakes. Lays it along for Clutterbuck. He'll cut. Cal Clutterbuck up top. Travis Hamannick. A wrister. It's a flex wide. Loose out of the corner. Riley Nash for the Hurricanes back out. Sealed off by Josh Bailey, and the Isles take over. I'm encouraged if I'm an Islander fan by Hamannick tonight. Tough turnover on Loktyanov's goal, but he has battled back to be a plus two in this hockey game. It shows that there's some depth to his confidence. Andre Sakara for Patrick Dwyer. Dwyer in control. Walks in the zone. His shot goes wide of Anders Nilsson. Kicked along by Andre Sakara. Moved by Dwyer. Captured by Loktyanov. Andre Loktyanov off a of body. Blocked by the aforementioned Travis Hamannick and back out. Sakara hands it off to Dwyer. Here they come. Patrick Dwyer working Hamannick going low. Taken out by Travis Hamannick. It's centered off the paddle of Nielsen. Sakara shot the flex wide as Eric Stahl does it again. He had the original rap chance. That went off Nielsen and it comes all the way back out. Eric Stahl told me this morning every once in a while Hamannick will put himself out of position delivering the big hit. There, I think he was right on the edge of doing that, but uh, ended up recovering. Now, Colin McDonald with two goals tonight off the stick of Ron Hainsey. He goes on to play. 15-20 left in this third period. Uh, it hasn't so far been the type of night that Eric Stahl has wanted, but what a day for his foundation that he and his brothers uh, have put together yesterday. They announced the first annual Stahl Foundation Charity Golf Tournament that will be... Uh, hosted by the Canadian PGA, and it will benefit Thunder Bay, but specifically children's cancer and families that are impacted by cancer. And that's very near and dear to Eric because his wife, Tanya, lost her sister, Tamara Vandenbroek, to cancer several years ago. We recorded a promo after practice yesterday at RCI. Now it's played here along the boards. Through the center zone, Nathan Gerby, one of four Carolina goals. Dahan. Lyles with a pinch, it kicks in the Islander bench. We get a stoppage of play. 
And I should say it's Tamara Vandenbroek Stevenson, her husband. Uh, actually is a linesman, or has been, a, was a longtime linesman in Western Hockey League. And, and so Eric really wants to help families that have been impacted by cancer and kids that fight this terrible disease. And that's one of the things that Jordan and Mark and Jared and the Stalls have been able to do. They put a lot of time and effort into organizing this very fine foundation, and it ties into tonight, of course, with St. Baldrick's and their pediatric cancer research. And this has been a record-setting night for St. Baldrick's here at PNC Arena, so we thank all of you who have taken part in that. As it pops over the head of Ron Hainsey, you can get onto their website, stbaldricks.org, and get more information and donate that way, too. Out to center ice. Across the line. Nielsen broke it up. Here's Oposo. Kyle Oposo working Jay Harrison. Harrison takes away his ice. Helmo going down. Getting to it here is Ron Hainsey. Top of your screen, Alex Semin, who flings it out to the center zone, where it's cleaned up by Thomas Hickey. It skips high in the air. It deflects as we see back in the Carolina zone, and they start over. Brett Belmore flushed out that time by Sundstrom. It deflects past Anders Nilsson. Icing is called here against Carolina. Oh, Kyle Oposo in some pain. He really hasn't been a big part of the Islander attack tonight. No. And he has been uh, fighting a lower body injury right. uh, where, you know, there was a lot of speculation he wouldn't play against Columbus. Good clean hit from Jay Harrison, and he was able to grind it out and play against the Blue Jackets. So he's not at 100% right now, whatever that injury may be. They're missing a few regulars as the injuries have taken a toll. That's why they have nine rookies in the lineup. Hudobin says no on the bid by Cal Clutterbuck. Now it's played here by Brock Nelson. His shot to flex wide of Hudobin. Clutterbuck gets to it, moving it by Josh Bailey. Some room for Jay Harrison. Little poke. Now to neutralize, and Hamannick will get it back in. Well, Clutterbuck uh, did not begin the night facing Hudobin because Hudobin was the backup, but Hudobin feels he has as good of a high, quick wrist shot as you're going to find in the game. A very whippy stick Cal Clutterbuck uses. And Ward gave up three goals in the early going, replaced by Anton Hudobin. 13.40 left in this third period. Islanders four, neither five of the game's four. It was yesterday that Justin Falk signed a six-year contract extension with the Hurricanes, but in 2011, he won the NCAA championship as a freshman with Minnesota Duluth. In the semifinal game, he played Notre Dame in Islanders Anders Lee. By the way, Falk had three points in that win over them, but the two have another connection. They both went to the same high school for a year, and Falk says he remembers that he was always a very fast skater. That's because Lee was a highly competitive speed skater, and he gave up that for hockey. John? Well, it looks like he made the right choice, but he's probably well on his way in that regard, and the elite athletes have to do that. It's forked wide off the stick of Riley Nash. Justin Falk is facing some adversity right now. I mean, even prior to the contract, you know, his game is not where he would expect it to be, and so he has to find a way to relocate it with simplicity. Anton Hudobin makes the save on Matt Martin, who's looking for a hat trick. And he'll melt it down with just about seven minutes gone in this third period. Uh, I mean, that's just the truth. You know, he's fought, I think, some some undisclosed injuries both before the Olympics and, you know, he was injured in Anaheim, but has come back and he hasn't been himself. And tonight has been another night where we, as you see, Martin, who's had a terrific night with a couple of goals, but this team goes as Andre Sakara and Justin Falk go oh, yeah. or don't go. And tonight's a great indication. Point shot by Kevin Churchman. And Hudobin got a piece of that one. Eric Stahl out to center ice. In control over the line. They'll lay it deep for Yuri Tulusti. Tulusti tries to get away from Churchman who plays it well. And the rookie will punch it all the way back in the Kane zone. 5-4. The Islanders maintain a lead here with 12.50 left. And regulation time. New York looking for their first win in the season series against Carolina in four tries. It goes past Nilsson, played by Tulusti. Sealed off by Nielsen. Now getting to it is Anders Lee. Off the boards and back out. That's a smart play. You know, 12 and a half minutes left, one goal hockey game. By the way, Jack Capuano has his timeout available. The Hurricanes burn theirs at 2 0 back in the first period. This might be a time to consider it. We'll see. Looks like he is contemplating it. 
Faceoff will come back. His team zone is fourth year with the Islanders. Did his due diligence in the American Hockey League with Bridgeport for getting a chance. And last year they were terrific down the stretch. They actually clinched a playoff spot in this building late in the season and then played Pittsburgh in round one. Nilsson ties it up. As the Hurricanes forge it out in front, Nathan Gerby, who did all the work, was knocked down by Franz Nielsen. <laughs> Hurricanes next game at PNC Arena. Saturday night, the Columbus Blue Jackets are here. You can log on to carolinahurricanes.com slash tickets to secure your seat. Well, this is uh, where he gets the whistle. Jack Capuano clearly comes on the ice with the lefty, so a much better chance to contend with Jordan Stahl on this draw. Off the face on. It pops out. Kirby takes out his man. It's DeHaan. Now Clutterbuck off the boards and out. Located by Josh Bailey. Cross corner dump in. Justin Falk ahead of Brock Nelson. Falk in control. Circling away from Clutterbuck. A long pass by Jordan. All the way back. Anders Nilsson out to play it. DeHaan was taken down and a penalty will follow. Jordan Stahl will take a seat. Well, the fans don't like it. The Hurricanes don't like it. Carolina minor penalty number 11, trip. I didn't know that it was, uh, you know, that, that they were going to wave off icing, but Jordan Stahl must have touched it, of course, because at the beginning of this year. Yeah, that's a penalty. Sure it's a good call. It's a good call by the referee. Plain and simple. Jordan Stahl must have gotten a piece of uh, Justin Falk's long pass because his stick wasn't on the ice, and that must have nullified the icing in the first place. And Yeah, I mean, these stick habit type penalties, we've seen quite a few of them. We saw a couple in Chicago last Friday. Hey, even if there's no, it, it, they're just avoidable. It's a habit and routine, uh, you know, type of thing. Hurricanes second least penalized team in the league coming in New Jersey is the only team that has taken fewer penalties but you're right trip these habits are starting to creep in here as Jordan Stahl goes off for tripping 802 is the time the Islanders will have their second power play and Kelly Sutherland comes over to have a word with Jack Capuano and I'm sure Jordan is trying to play the puck obviously not contact the skates in that particular case and this is all about the line change of whether or not Lee could come off the ice I'm guessing right. are they saying it's a training issue or you know that or, you know he was cut earlier in the game maybe he believes he was cut again I'm not sure you can see the residue on his jersey we saw former hurricane Doug Waite in the back of that Islander bench Stanley Cup winner and that is the issue trip you're right they have to get the blood off the sweater before he's allowed back in Ron Hainsey in control along the boards all the way back out Nielsen directing traffic Oposo coming back flushed out by Malhotra critical stage here 1144 left in this third period one goal game the Islanders with a 5-4 lead now their second power play. Franz Nielsen pulls up. Lays it inside. And a give back. Nielsen out of the corner. Holding onto it. To the point. Donovan. Top of the ring. Franz Nielsen. He'll walk it down the wall. Set up a man. McDonald. Good save. Hudobin. And the Hurricanes get it out. Maybe a chance. Matt Donovan. Ahead of a toppling Patrick Dwyer. Donovan. Colin McDonald. Across for Brock Nelson. Off the stick of Belmore. And out of play. See Nielsen, he's always the guy that has a part or carries the puck in the attacking zone on the power play. It's uncanny. And that's one of the reasons that Garth Snow actually elected to let Mark Strike go, is because he has this ability to do it. And when you can carry the puck in without having to dump it in, it leads to good chances. And it led to one there, and then Belmore afterwards on the counter had a good stick. Face off is one back. DeHaan along the boards, Ryan Strom. And back out, Travis Hamannick will settle it down. See the time left in the Islander power play. Up ice pressure by Nathan Gerby. Now it's carried by Calvin DeHaan. Hamannick, they slowly organize from their own zone. DeHaan, a spring pass in on Hudobin. No further play. Sure, I think that was going to be offsides. DeHaan just missed on that tape-to-tape -tape pass. We've seen a couple of beauties from him in this hockey game. The ability to make that tape-to-tape -tape pass and transition, 
as I said, a, a first-round pick, 12th overall, has fought some shoulder issues, uh, but he's going to be a good one. Deliberate offside is called, so they take it all the way back in the Islanders' zone. 10.48 left in this third period. Off the draw. Nielsen now gets it back for Matt Donovan. Riley Nash is on him. 43 seconds left in the Islander manpower advantage. Brock Nelson. Bronze Nielsen now holding on to it. He'll stick handle to the boards, lay it back. That's a tough pass for Matt Donovan. And out to play it here is Anders Nielsen. Well, the Hurricanes penalty killing is uh, just under 30 seconds from giving them some, some real life, especially with the forwards. I think creating pressure up the ice when they can. It's been a real hallmark of their game over the last 10. Now it's carried in. Around the boards, Oposo tries to make it happen. It deflects back for Nielsen. Here's Donovan. A risker caught off by Hudobin. Played here by Ron Hainsey. Eight seconds left in the power play. Loose along the boards, getting to it. Trying to get it out and succeeding is Alexander Semin. As he won that battle beautifully out of the box, Jordan with a steal. Here he comes. He's sealed off by Anders Lee. It's gloved down. Carried in the zone one more time. Hurricanes working ahead. Riley Nash going deep. Now it's played by Lee through center ice and all the way back in the Kane zone. He obviously got that blood on the jersey taken care of because Jordan Stahl was a very determined big hockey player coming out of the box and Lee was able to stop all of that uh, momentum beautifully. Islanders 0 for 2 with their power play. Only two shots. This is Ryan Strome. They'll let it fly well wide of Hudobin. Played in the center zone by Kevin Churchman. He'll clear it all the way back. Out of the way is the referee, Kelly Sutherland. And now Sakara away for Lyles. 9-12 left in this third period. Churchman lays it back out to neutral ice. A loose puck as we see. Controlled by Hickey. Now they cross in the zone. Sasekis sealed off beautifully that time as the Hurricanes. John Michael Lyles got back. Played here by Helmo. Broken up by Sakara. And they spring a man. It's walked out by Elias Lindholm. He'll move it by the defense and Calvin DeHaan. Lindholm gets after it. Out of the reach of Lyles. Mike Helmo through the center ice area. Working Loktyanov. Mike Helmo sealed off by Loktyanov. They go to the corner. Helmo out in front denied by Hudobin. It's loose. Hudobin again makes a save on Colin McDonald. Now Casey Sasekis controlling. The pass picked off by Andre Loktyanov. And away they go. A lead pass over the line. Eric Stahl gets to it. Broken up by Calvin DeHaan. And the Islanders wheel back towards the Carolina zone. Very close to too many men on the ice there as uh, a line change was happening right as Carolina was trying to create numbers coming up the ice. Eric Stahl in the skates of Justin Falk. It's offside. 8.02 left to go in this third period. We are approaching the late stages in Raleigh. Islanders 5 and the Hurricanes 4. Well, the Canes are hoping for sunny skies in South Florida when they head there Thursday night. Canes and Panthers starting with Hurricanes live at 7 Eastern on Fox Sports Carolinas. And trip we could see their new goaltender, Roberto Luongo. But you and I have seen him many times in a Florida Panther jersey. And a lot of young players. Uh, they play in front of Roberto with his new hockey club. And it's just amazing when you think about what has happened in Vancouver in the goaltending department in the last couple of years? The Luongo, that's where his wife's from. That's probably where he wanted to be. And so now he's a big part of their future. Another penalty. Sakara. He'll get the gate here. McDonald was long gone. Colin McDonald has, a, has had a nice game here. And the Islanders will have their Carolina third power penalty. play. Number four, two minutes for tripping. Well, there haven't been a lot of forgettable nights for Andre Sakara this year. He's probably the team's most valuable player. Anton Hudobin would have a good chance, I think, if he was healthy the whole year. But this has been extremely forgettable for Sakara and his partner, Justin Falk. It's a big game for both of those players for a variety of reasons. Sakara coming off a good performance. Falk, of course, the big news. And have to find a way to kill it, and Falk picks him up there with that clear. So the Islanders have been stymied so far. The Hurricanes are flirting with a problem here if they continue to do this. Plus, they're fighting the clock. They trail by one. 7.37 left in the third period. Matt Donovan now will organize the thoughts of the New York Islanders. Coming off a win, Sunday at home over Columbus. 2-0. Oposo pulls up. Anders Lee. His pass denied by Manny Malhotra, but he got it back. 
Anders Lee from the corner. Nielsen at his side. Top of your screen, Kyle Oposo. Punched by Donovan off the blocker of Hudobin. Nielsen now. Hurried a bit by Justin Falk. Out of the corner, it's loose. Getting to it, Franz Nielsen. It goes by Oposo. Now a foot race. Winning the race is Lee. Back to the point, Donovan in direct pass. Located by Brock Nelson. Settled down by Matt Donovan. He'll slide it across for Nielsen. Get it back. Donovan shot stopped by Hudobin. Good save through traffic, and it's always good to see a, a former Hurricane Stanley Cup champion. You know, it was first Doug Wade and then Mark Recchi, two additions to the hockey club, and, you know, it's... He wears a lot of hats for the New York Islanders, which is not something you typically see, but I know he's chosen to really fall in love with this franchise. Hamannick with a shot wide of Hudobin. That's right, he's part of their management and also an assistant coach. It deflects high over the top of Anton Hudobin. You don't see that a lot. No, like I said, it's many, many hats and at times an NHL network analyst too. So, I mean, he literally is a jack of all trades. And it's it's difficult to, to be in so many different departments, but Doug Wade comes out of Lake Superior State, uh, originally with the New York Rangers, goes on to Edmonton and St. Louis, and, and a big part of the Carolina Hurricanes, and, and then Mark Recchi, the guys that gave him the the type of put you over the hump type uh, pieces. Good block by Jay Harrison. A shot taken by Calvin DeHaan right off the faceoff. 35 seconds left in the Islander power play, and here they come. 6.23 left in regulation time. Ryan Strome lays it across. A good stick by Nathan Gerby, and it comes all the way back out. Islanders go D to D. Hamannick, lead pass for Cal Clutterbuck. Moving in on Brett Belmore. Down the wall, Hamannick. Off a of body. Good play by Harrison. He sets up Eric Stahl, and away they go. Nine seconds left on their kill. Seven pickpocketed by Ryan Strome. Here he comes, the rookie, with a shot wide of Hudobin. Played by John Michael Lyles. Out of the box is Sakara. Even turns on the ice where it counts. Hurricanes down by one. Their puck management is everything right now, and I think they, the Hurricanes have to make sure to make good decisions at the offensive blue line. Strome's had a nice night. He really has. He comes all the way back in. Hickey. One off by Churchman. Kicked by Lyles for Skinner. Sasekis got back. Carolina seals the wall. Lindholm, Sasekis, Lindholm, and ricochets around. Elias Lindholm. Kevin Churchman, the young defenseman on him. Lindholm stopping and starting. Tug, the penalty will follow. Carolina will go to the power play. Lindholm, good work. He gets it from Nash. Lays it across off of McDonald. Play continues. I guess that's not possession. Lindholm again with six skaters out, and the Hurricanes restart. Lindholm has been a real leader in this hockey game. He's the guy that had the net front presence on, on the first goal, and he's kept it going. Here's Lindholm. Skinner inside now. Turning with it is Eric Stahl. Played by Thomas Hickey, and finally, we get the whistle. 4.48 left to go in this third period. It's a hurricane power play down by one when we come back as we go down the stretch in Raleigh. The Churchman in the box for holding, and the Carolina power play tonight has been hot. And the unit that drew the penalty, at least parts, pizza, pieces of it, gets the first crack at it. Lindholm draws the penalty to Churchman. This was the unit with Lindholm in front, Skinner scoring. To get the Hurricanes on the board and some life for the first period, here's the other unit scoring in the second. But this is a real statement here by Kirk Muller going with this unit. Look for Skinner on the one unit, seven on the other, two natural scores. Off the faceoff, it's one back. But played outside the blue line by Riley Nash. Jay Harrison, Skinner, Lachtianoff, and Lindholm, the power play. Off of Hamannick, gloved down by Clutterbuck. Travis Hamannick gets to it off the boards. He'll bounce it all the way down to Anton Hudobin. I, I, I've liked Hamannick for a variety of years. And, and I think he's a guy that is never going to accept losing. And uh, he doesn't want to endure seasons like New York has this year. Calvin DeHaan looks around. Sasikis hammers one. Two Hurricanes seal the wall. Lachtianoff and Lindholm. Forged out by Skinner. Good job that time getting to it by Brock Nelson. Four minutes left in the period. You see the time of the power play. Here comes Lindholm for Lachtianoff. We'll move to the outside of the pack. Riley Nash, Andre Lachtianoff, all the way across. Harrison! 
Larson, what a block. Going down was Matt Donovan, and the Islanders get it out. And he's struggling to the bench, but boy, that's the type of thing that they did shutting out Columbus 2-0 on Sunday. I mean, they were very good at congesting uh, in front of their own net, getting to the attacking net. Jordan Stahl leaves it. Taken down, Simmons. They will continue. The Islanders kill more time. That is what is left in terms of this power play and the period. Hurricanes down by one. Trailed at one point by four. Good stick at the line by Casey Sasikas, and it pops out. Pretty gutsy kill, you'd have to say, from the Islanders. They've had the desperation on their side. Jordan Stahl, he's in, wide of Hamannick. He throws on the brakes. Indirect pass to Kara. Inside it goes, the turning stick of Alexander Semen. His shot caught by Anders Nilsson. See him, the natural goal scorer on one unit, Skinner, and there you see Semen on the other. What a chance from that far out because it's him shooting it. Here's the block. What a super block by Donovan. And then Eric Stahl on the receiving end. That might even just be a frustration type encounter right there. It's been a tough night for Eric. And, and here, Seven is you know on the outside of the dots, but it's still because it's off of his tape. is a good scoring chance because he fires the puck like he can. Islanders led 4-0 at one time. 4-2 after one. Carolina outscoring the Islanders 2-1 in the second period to make it what it is right now, a 5-4 game. The shots. 31 New York, 27 Carolina. 239 left in regulation time. Even turns on the ice. Carolina two for four with the power play. One timer Skinner blocked by Calvin DeHaan, and he gets it out. He'll probably call his timeout here, Jack Cap. You want to held on to it earlier in the period. At least I would. What a block there by DeHaan. Great block. We'll take a look at tonight's Storm Tracker trip. Let's see how this has played out. Well, the key one, unfortunately, is 27 and 4. They're a combined minus 7. Justin just signing the new contract. And Andre Sakara coming off of a bounce back night in Winnipeg. And, and they've been just so darn important yeah. to this hockey club. And they, the Hurricanes, of course, did not take charge in the first. They got way behind this game uh, before anybody had settled in. I thought he'd call his time out here, I have to tell you. He's saving. Now, DeHaan. The draft? <laughs> Cleared ahead. Anything's possible. <laughs> You're right about it. You're Anything right. Anything is right. possible. You are right. So, don't go anywhere at home. 2-12 left. <laughs> Remarkable things can still happen. Now, they tried to get back that Vanek first round pick. <laughs> it's cleared all the way back in the zone. Icing is called here. 201 on the clock. And now we have another moment. <laughs> Well, at some point, he'll probably use it, but this is where Justin Paul can, hey, you know what? They've had a tough night, but this is where you have to find a way to dig deep and make something happen. Jordan Stahl is going to try to win this on the backhand as seven folks lining up on the wing. Off the draw. Hamannick. Played along the boards. Cal Clutterbuck approaching Andre Sakara. Falk away from Josh Bailey. 148 left. We'll keep an eye on Anton Hudobin. Buck is loose. Simmons on it. Alexander Simmons. He scored his 22nd goal of the season tonight. A power play in the second period. Here's Sakara. Hudobin takes a glance at the bench. Nielsen cuts it off. Played by Oposo. Ahead for Franz Nielsen. A quick up. Anders Lee. He'll pitch it to an open corner. He'll get there ahead of Justin Falk. Good hustle by the Islanders lead. Out of the corner now. Jeff Skinner takes over. A buck 15 left, and the Islanders lead is all over the ice. Oposo centers one back. Moved along by Thomas Hickey. Anders Lee to the outside of Falk. For the point man, wedged along by DeHaan. Off the stick of Oposo. Under a minute left. Riley Nash has it. Carolina gets it back out to center. Hudobin is halfway out. Nash gets it deep. There he goes. Six skaters out for Kirk Muller. Two, four checkers in a steal. Lindholm turns it over to Calvin DeHaan. Now Nelson is pressured. Elias Lindholm. Now the Hurricanes attempt to pass. It's broken up. Forged out by Josh Bailey. John Michael Lyles. Pestered by Cal Clutterbuck. Ron Hainsey, 27 seconds left. 5-4 in favor of the Islanders. Here comes Hainsey. Racing through center, pickpocketed by Sasikas. 
And now Lyles for the final push. 15 seconds left. Here's Skinner at the line, moving it by Matt Martin. Nilsson out to play it. He'll leave it there. Possibly trouble brewing. Five seconds left. They jockey along the end wall. It pops out. Skinner can't make it happen. Broken up by Matt Martin. And the New York Islanders come to Raleigh and defeat the Hurricanes. Five to four. Well, John, now that you look at the game and it's whole body of work for the 60 minutes, it's a very disappointing outcome. Uh, you know, one of our keys to begin the season was to be a good team at home and look for a benchmark of over 10 games, over 500 in this building. And you just can't do that if you don't establish a home ice uh, advantage and tell the other team, in this case the New York Islanders, this is the way the game is going to be played. From the goal on out, the Hurricanes were not ready to start the game on time. As they have all year, they showed some tremendous resolve. But when you look at it in its entirety at this point, John, that's not good enough. They needed to start this game better coming off of the Winnipeg win. The start was not on time. And as far as the New York Islanders were concerned, they were able to get some life in this hockey game. And it came early in the shape of four unanswered goals. The Hurricanes flying back in, but the Islanders had enough to gut it out tonight, five to four. Stay with us. Hurricanes Live will come your way next. We have total post-game coverage on St. Baldrick's night from PNC Arena. Again, the New York Islanders five and the Carolina Hurricanes four on Fox Sports Carolinas.